Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you, Lord, for never giving us more than what we can handle. May your spirit be the one who conditions, who renews, and who teaches us this morning. Lord, uh, we just want to honor you because you've given us this time so we can focus on you and your character. We thank you for this Friday. We, we pray for many, many of the members of the body of Christ who are struggling, who have no direction, who have no pastor to teach them and to comfort them, who have, no, who have closed churches right now but hungry souls. Lord, we pray for the churches out there that are lacking leadership. And Lord, we just pray for um, the elderly members of the body of Christ, Lord. We pray for our, our brothers and sisters and the ones that are not yet our brothers and sisters at, at the Shoreline um, Care Center and Glenwood Care Center and even at Sycamore, Lord. We, we pray that, um, that if, it's, if it's your will, Lord, that they be present with you, Lord. Let those who stay behind be able to accept it and see what you want them to see and hear what you would want them to hear. And let your men, your pastors, uh, preach a message that honors you and that relieves them from a wrongful misdirection of hate and, and confusion about who you are in their lives. We know that you are just God and you're a loving God. And this morning, Lord, we just want to honor you and your spirit with our attention right now. We thank you and we pray this in your holy name, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. So that, yeah, there is a lot going on. We're, we're this, this, typically we, we teach the Trinity um, you know, this morning, and we're not going to change it. Uh, we're going to keep on target. We only got a little bit of time, so, uh, you know, we're doing fine. Uh, let's uh, look at the two definitions that we've got for the Trinity. Mind you, we got many, many uh, moments right now where you guys are going to be held accountable for what you're being presented. So if you don't know this, write it down. Honor God with the pencil and paper that he gave you. We need to be good stewards. And don't be proud. Don't be, don't be shy. And don't be bashful. Because this is about the only good thing, if the rapture happens, that you're going to be able to come up with uh, to get you out of a tr tough situation today, tomorrow, and forever. All right, uh, we've got two basic definitions of the Trinity. Do you have it? No? Okay, you can give it to me and I will put it on there. Uh, um, you, can, you can give me the, the board and uh, I will... Still the same stuff. God's character never changes. It, well, it's called basic definition. That's a new computer, but yeah, it would be under there. Um, we we've got the old computer right out there, and once you once you feel comfortable, we'll we'll talk about this. Yeah. So if you give me the image. You on there, Mule? Okay. Um, you had me there for a second. All right, there we go. Let's see if we can get the image here. Yeah. Let me see. This is a. Uh, this is. Can you believe a girl gave me this? Gave you what? 
uh, wrote this for me a long time ago. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Basic definition. Here is basic definition number one. Write it down. It'll be the best thing you guys ever write down if you don't know it. Um, yeah, that's the basic definition of the Trinity. Uh, real simplified version. There's a lot of versions out there that are very, very great, but use a lot of words that are two-syllable, three-syllable, or antiquated, meaning they are pithy. They sound real religious, and they, they're really good, you know? But believe it or not, it's an oxymoron to say basic definition. But this is real simple. Within the one being that is God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons, namely the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We, we used to have it in different languages, uh, in Spanish as well. Um, and you notice that the being and the persons are different. They're, they're highlighted there. They're, they're accented. And it's like that for a reason, okay? Um, you, can actually, you can actually convince a Jehovah Witness about the Trinity by using something as simple as that. They won't believe in it. They'll believe that, that you're completely nuts, but at least they'll know where you're coming from. You understand what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. this this is simple. Okay, you don't. This is making a clear statement that you're not a tritheist. Okay, that you're not. You don't believe in three gods. You believe in one God because the word within the one being that is God. Yeah, that's classic, true Christianity. Any other interpretation is a misunderstanding of the Trinity. Now, um, don't let them sucker you by saying the word Trinity isn't even in the Bible. All you can do is turn it around on them and say, well, neither is cocaine, but I don't need it in there to know it's you know, not right to do it. There's things that God reveals to you just in His essence. The Bible gives you the Bible tells you that the Spirit of God cannot be lied to. The reason they don't understand it is because they lack the Spirit of God. It's very simple. Anybody that refuses to understand the Trinity and doesn't put the effort behind it may not be saved. If you consistently refute the Trinity and you try harder to refute the Trinity than accept it, then I, I will strongly say either you're more powerful than the Spirit of God, or you're just not a believer. Yes? They reject the deity of Christ. Dude. Yeah. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Because yeah. There's no way you can be saved by Michael Yarkin. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it can be simplified in so many ways. But, but I'm, I'm teaching you guys the basic understanding of the Trinity. Even if you don't uh, understand a, a lot of it, it takes a while. It, it, it takes a while. You need to hear it over and over and over and over again. And it kind of finds its spot in your life. And it and happens when you most expect it in the weirdest ways. You know... Um, uh, it's, I don't want to say like falling in love, but it, if you don't love God, then you can't love anybody else. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. God's word says you can't give something you don't have. And if you have a hard time giving forgiveness, it's because I don't think you've inventoried the word all in the Bible. When God forgave you for all your sins, well... It's all relative to his ability, and his ability has to do with his character. And his character is omni. He don't miss nothing. Let's just say if God does your laundry, don't you think it's perfect? Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Yeah. Can you uh, can you uh, supply him with his phone for this call, please? Thank you, sir. So within the one being that is God, we believe one being to be God. Not two beings, not three beings, one being. And within that one being that is God, um, we see the rest come together. It, it, it gels together. There exists eternally. When does eternality finish? Or when does it start for that matter? It's timeless. God's Infinite being is much different than our finite being. When were you born, John? There you go. How about you, uh, Eddie? February 2nd, 79. How about you, Ken? Ken, not you. Oh, I'm just saying. You're looking over there. Yeah, I know. I did that for a reason. He got me. Yeah, gotcha. So, how about you, Tony? Oh, 727. How about you, Pedro? Juan? Huh? You want 50 bucks? Uh, uh, no, he doesn't. Okay. Juan, no, not this. When were you born? Uh, there you go. How about you, um, uh, Josiah? Gilbert? Yeah. When were you born, me? Seventy. Robert. Nineteen sixty-two. We all have a start date. We are finite creatures. It's appointed for a man to die. How many times? Once. Once. Some of us may not die, depending on your s catalogical perspective. But we still get a new. Yeah. Yeah. We get a new body. Either way. Either way. We're all going through the car wash. Yeah. You know, um, so so there are things that apply to us that will not apply to God in his being. But we're still made in his image. So we, we have these qualities that are, that are granted to us that are not granted to other finite creatures like um, animals, birds. There you go. You know, um, very good. So you found it. Bilingual. And if you have the Spanish version, you will get extra credit today. Extra credit today. There you go. And if you're white and you memorize the Spanish, you'll get extra, extra credit. Okay? And if you do a third language, you'll get extra, extra, extra credit. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Food, caffeine, everything. <laughs> Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. <laughs> Unless you're Pentecostal and you try to say sambara, lambara, lambara, tambara. It's not going to work. Um, so within this one being that we call God, there exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons. Now we've landed on this discussion before. And I've referred you to the the five minute uh, philosophy of uh, personhood. It's a philosophical question if you're discussing the idea of what constitutes personhood. You know, does, does DNA constitute personhood? Does conscious awareness uh, constitute personhood? Does whether people like you or not? You know, if you've got a lot of people that like you, does that matter? Um, you know, all these are philosophical perspectives. The Bible says very clearly, God made man in his own image. Conscious awareness. I do not get my sexual ethics from animals, nor should you. Okay, when you start doing that, you need to be very careful. Okay, that's why God said to his own people, hey, don't have sex with animals. Don't have sex with your mother. Don't have sex with your father. Why do you think he said that when he said that in the book of well, Exodus and uh, Leviticus? People were doing it. Why? Because people were doing it. People were doing it. He's not going to talk into something that people weren't doing. As a matter of fact, where'd they get those habits from? Their parents. 
No, think about it in that context. Does anybody remember? They were under. It was uh, the the worship. Bala, Bala, no, not Bala, it was. Uh, uh, man, I forget the name of the, the person. There was that statue they used to sacrifice the babies to. They were they were idol worshippers. Yeah. It's it Balaam. Balaam. Yeah, yeah. Balaam. Balaam and the Gosh. Egyptian gods. They were Gosh. under persecution for 250 years, half and half. Okay. Who's been influencing you all these years? The world. You got half your bad habit from your culture, from your race. How about from your mom and dad? From anything. You know, we just heard a beautiful testimony of a brother that said he, he was brought up in that and, and it was his Norman standard. He didn't think anything was wrong. He thought everybody was doing it like that. I thought every, I thought every Mexican hung their kid upside down in their garage as a Norman standard until I spent the night at a white kid's house. And I saw his dad kiss him goodnight. I said, what the heck was that? Until he opened my eyes to love and tenderness, I was shocked. That's when I got upset and I said, I can't believe your dad does that. I talked so much smack that night, I lost my best friend at Seven years old, I lost my best friend because I didn't understand love. I rejected love. I hated love because in reality, it showed me a missing element in my life. And I couldn't justify it. I was like, I can't get that, so I, may, I might as well hate it. I might as well, yeah, fight against it. I might as well call that wrong instead of right. Because I can't change my, my father and I can't change my mother. At that age. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm realizing because I can vocab it out now. I can communicate that. But it's sad. It's sad. It's sad that we are somewhat tarnished because of the lack of leadership. Some people are tarnished because they lack your presence in their life in the right way. You have no excuse. You have a rudder. His name is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And he's one of the members of the Godhead. That's also a term we use to describe who God is. So personhood has to do with a lot of things that we identify even in our own selves. You know? Uh, how many people like... Uh, uh, Sky's personality more than we do uh, Canelo. <laughs> he is. He's growing in what? In what? His personality. See how? See how we 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 lend that over to a non-human. You know, we have we have standards. We transfer into. The, the concept of personhood. Does he have to be human to have a personality? No. And you have to understand that's a philosophical question. How many people like Lex Luthor as opposed to Superman? Yeah. He's not even real. We know we made it up. Somebody made it up. How many people like Casper the Friendly Ghost knowing that Casper was evil? So, you know, whether or not you have spent enough time in that philosophical um, discussion is irrelevant. The Holy Spirit, God the Father, and God the Son are co-equal and co-eternal. Um, the third clause, or the last clause, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit identify the three persons in the Godhead. And listen, I'm not, I'm not teaching you that when you go to heaven, God's not going to reveal himself in multi-persons. What I'm teaching is the Bible. And the Bible, from cover to cover, teaches that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are God. And that's what you need for salvation. That's what you need because they all are uni united in your salvation. They all take a role 
in your salvation. And it's very important for you to start to understand that that's what makes God in the Bible. When you go to heaven and he reveals himself to be multi, in other words, more than three, that's up to him. And by that time, we don't need salvation because we'll be in that, in that dimension of, his, of heaven and eternality. And as a matter of fact, when he, our eternal state starts, we're not even going to remember none of this. It's going to be a different thing. We can't even use words to describe what heaven is, and we have to use the best that we can and the best that John could do under the Holy Spirit. And that's what makes this season right now and the epidemic that we're going through kind of fun to discuss. But do we need to take it too personal? No, I wouldn't. Just know that all things work together for those who love God and are called to his purpose. It's not about you. It's about him. What are you going to do to represent him in this situation? And believe me, when one of us gets sick, then you're going to know who's who. You're going to know who's who. Okay? You're really going to know who's who. So let's just be very clear on that. So uh, does everybody got this written down? Amen. And, and I would strongly suggest that you memorize this. Why? Because let's say you don't believe me. Okay? And this is very, very true about a lot of things in religion or in Christianity. At least have the decency to put the effort in that discussion. If you're going to argue with a Jehovah Witness, learn what they believe. Learn, respect them enough to say, okay, well, why do you believe what you believe? Because if the Spirit of God is, is motivating you, then at the very least, just understand that God's the owner of all truth. Amen. Okay, that's it. We need to be truth seekers. How do you think, why do you think it's so hard for a Jehovah Witness to change his whole life? It's exactly the same reason that God's trying to do in your life. Amen. No different. It's going to change your social structure. It's going to show, it's going to change how you spend the afternoon. It's going to show, it's going to change the way you express anger. It's going to change the economy, the way you look at things. You know, you're telling a Jehovah Witness and a Mormon, hey, let, your, let all that go. Just like God's telling you, hey, stop thinking that way. Stop acting that way. Stop expressing your emotions that way. No different. God's not asking you to drag it in your new relationship. Neither are they. They don't know what to do when you hit them with the truth. But accept it like God's telling you. Accept that you're a new creature in Christ. Does that make sense? It's not easy. So don't expect them to sit there and, you're right, you're right. <laughs> now what? Thank you. They, gotta, they can't do the shuffle anymore. You know, those Jehovah Witnesses, they can party better than we can. Heck yeah. You know? You think you got it down? Uh-uh. I've been to some of their gatherings and some of those 80-year-old ladies, they can do the the, the, I don't know what they call that shuffle the, where they sing the cowboy song and they're all doing this. Uh, yeah, the, the, I don't know what it is, but you, they, they little kids are doing it. You know, everybody gets into this row and there's 15 people this way, 20 people that way. And you got an 80 year old lady doing this and she's doing it better than everybody. They party better than any Christian I've ever seen. Oh, yeah, they're cutting edge. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know why I say it, but I'm just telling you, um, they're as human as we are. They're man in God's image. Just like you are. They need to hear the message of God. The real God. Jesus Christ. 
It's not by works. Okay? And you got to know this stuff. I mean, if, they're gonna, if you're going to convince them about the Trinity, you might as well know how to explain the basic definition, and it's pretty simple. Amen? Amen? Now, how about the second one? Difference in function does not indicate an inferiority of nature. Very simple. Very simple to the point. Okay? Uh, some of these words I don't understand now, but uh, what's inferiority? Inferiority. In other words, uh, there's no difference in value. Okay, God sees us all the same. And in, in terms of the definition of the Trinity, where it's applied, just because the Father does something different than the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit does something different than the Son, they're all equal in their essence. They're all God. So I heard it said this way. If, if God could become human and he did what Jesus did, would he talk like Jesus did in the situations that Jesus was, was quoted? Would he talk about the Father the way he did? Would he talk about the Holy Spirit the way he did? And the answer is unequivocally, duh, he would. He wouldn't change a word. He would say exactly what he said. Why? Because when he was a human, he was a little lesser than the angels. He was caught up in creation. He was vulnerable. He, he became as vulnerable as any one of his created creatures because he was fully man. But yet he didn't give in to temptation. Had plenty of opportunities. He could have called a legion of angels and swipe him down. He didn't even have to call him. He could just go like that and the world would crumble. The universe would just vacuum down. You know? You don't think the angels were like, ah! You know? They were tripping. They, they were learning about God's plan as it was unfolding in front of them. As a matter of fact, I like the picture of the, of the passion of the Christ. Yeah. And at one point when Jesus is in the cross, he's sitting there bleeding out and, and, and he's sitting there and the sky is thundering. And all of a sudden, there's a picture of some bald, white-headed, uh, evil looking uh, with a baby in his hand. And I was thinking, wow, God's even using Satan in the plan of salvation. He's got Satan doing something to teach us that he's still in control. No matter how much control you think you got, you ain't in control. Of nothing. And his ways are so much more higher than ours. You know, he's got so much grace you couldn't exhaust it. He's got so much mercy. Oh my gosh, we're living in it right now. We're really living in God's mercy right now. And we need to give it out, man. We need to give out their mercy, man, because that's the essence of God. He's merciful. You know, he's merciful. That's the best cologne you could ever wear. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? You ever hear somebody talking and irritating the hell out of you? Yeah. Hey, hey, let me tell you, when your nerves are in, just remember God's God's never, ever, ever going to be sick and tired of us. We gotta we gotta we gotta dull that out. You know, we gotta dull that out. We just I'm not saying be stupid. But just understand why you're feeling pain. How many people know only people that are living feel pain? Feel pain? Uh, Dead people don't feel pain. And we're not supposed to numb that pain. We're supposed to experience it and do something about it in the glory of God. Amen? Amen. So as we go through these challenging moments where you see politics mixed 
with the reality of this situation. I heard so much junk about this virus that it's politically motivated. You know, and it's China getting back at United States because we're getting so powerfully uh, economically. Now we're at 20% unemployment and drop of a dime. And every day is worse and worse. Every day is worse and worse. There's people in Oxnard that don't even know it and they're carrying it. We, we may be A carriers. I was texting Pastor Troy today. I said, I think I'm an A carrier. And he said, why? And he goes, because I'm healthy. And I'm, I'm the guy that never gets sick. I get sick once every five years. But when I get sick, it's one day and I get my butt kicked. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. You know? But the reality is, God's going to humble us. God's going to humble us. So he may, he, we know, we're here to be a good sign. Amen? Amen. So, um, here's God's character. And this is the essence of, of, our, of our God. Now, could Michael, the archangel, take the titles of Jesus Christ? That's really silly. It, it's completely impossible for Michael to be G, G, or God. Yes. You know, it's impossible. You know, uh, it just, it, it, not even contextually. You wouldn't even find it contextually in the Bible. You're, you're, it's much easier to jump from one end of the, the San Francisco bridge to the other. As a handicapped person, blind, deaf, and dumb on a windy day, than it is to make that connection. You know, you really got to be on a good one, you know, to make that concept. And they believe it. Just like you believe you're getting away with something. Yeah, they 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 have a um, they have a uh, yeah they have a magazine they have a, a organization that teaches them all the same all around the world in theme every month and they all learn the same thing at the same time they're all being taught the same propaganda. And it changes as the, the, the world adjusts to that propaganda because all their propaganda uh, against the truth um, doesn't stand. So they get craftier and craftier and they feed off the ignorant. They feed off uh, religious people. They feed off people that are very um, inverted. Yeah, they knock on doors. They're very social. It, it's a social club because they, they're out there knocking on doors and reaching elderly that people aren't visiting. They're reaching out to people that are not integrated in society, that are forgotten by, by their family members, rejected, people that are hurt. They're great people. They're beautiful people. There's nothing wrong with Jehovah Witnesses as people but it's their faith that is in vain. Yeah, my dad's best buddy is a very kind man. Yeah. Dad. Yeah. I love them as people. They're very kind. I trust them more than Christians, in a sense. Recently, recently got yeah. added, like a lot of people do way later in life. Right? Yeah. Kids, like, not ever celebrate, you know, I believe I believe in some of their 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 ideas are are well hearted and their in, in, their their perspectives are probably closer to the reality. But the true 
the true issue is who's Jesus Christ. That's the reality. That's the heart of the message. Nobody has a problem with God the Father. Right. It's Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit that are that are really at question. But it really stands on Jesus Christ because if you, if you can't have either or if you don't have Jesus, the real Jesus. Yeah, I don't think they find something that's true. And then the name when they find is true, Christians, whatever it is, that we have changed the name of Yorge Valle into Lord. Yeah. That's correct. I don't know why we do it. I don't know why we do it. Yeah. And then they, they pick it apart and they prove it. They're, they're right. I give them that. Yeah. And then they show that we have changed God's name. Yeah. Um, and now they've got you because they're correct. But then they take you on this whole while long on a fantasy trail, which isn't true, and they take away the deity of Christ, they take away the personhood of the Holy Spirit, they take away all these other things. That are you, you have to be very um, learned, very disciplined. You cannot be an emotionalist. No. You have to be very, very um, keen to the techniques yes. that are being used. It's like fighting. You don't want to get in a fight with somebody that knows how to fight. Because one of their techniques, if you've ever seen Holyfield, or what's his name, the, the, the small guy? Magnation? No, Mayweather. 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 Mayweather, when he fights, sometimes he's fighting an opponent and he doesn't swing at all. He hides, he exhausts the dude. He gets the dude tired. And that's a technique. It's a technique. He's just smart. If he's got a million dollar punch, he's going to wait. Is this, yeah, just be, all you got to do is be smart. Be smart, man. To be a good Christian, you have to be smart. You got to pick and choose where you grapple with the individual. Pick things that matter. Because if Jesus Christ isn't God, then what the hell does the rest matter? But because Jesus Christ is God, that's where it stands. That's why this is important. No matter what you do, guys, no matter what you do, it's all based on the character of God. This has to be your basis. If we don't agree that this is God, then it doesn't matter. If this is Michael the Archangel, then he's God. Flat out. No argument. Because before you're Christians, you have to be true seekers. It doesn't matter what you are. When you're ready, you're ready. It doesn't matter if you murdered. It doesn't matter if you raped. It doesn't matter if you've done drugs. It doesn't matter anything. When you're done, you're done. You're done. You've got to be ready. It doesn't matter what they're doing. That well, Homo legeo ain't about them. Homo legeo is about you. You ain't telling God nothing. Do you understand how easy it is? For us. It, this is really, really kind of the, the thing that will surpass all understanding. It's the peace that surpasses all understanding. In other words, you, 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 you really don't need the smartest guy in the world to teach you. You just need to be willing to be taught. Remember, Peter, Peter tells us we need to uh, yearn for the sincere word of God. That means you, you do have to read the Bible, man. You do have to read. Man, Jesus himself said, the food that I need, you don't know. The hunger you should have shouldn't be for the food that goes away every hour or two hours. How many people are hungry every like 10, 15 minutes? How many people have food issues? Well, you, know, you should have word of God issues, man. We're going to get it. You heard the governor of California say, we're all going to get it. Okay, well, he said it. You know, we're all... Hey, when he says, you know, the population of California... Half of it's going down. Hey, if C Street could be the only ones that are that, uh, that don't get it, I need you guys to be serious about it. Because you guys are C Street. You see how it is? If we're the only ones that don't get it, you know how many... We're going to be on CNN, we're going to be on NBC, we're going to be on MSN, we're going to be on Oprah Winfrey. All of you guys are, we're going to be, you talk about God moving you around? We're going to be on Joel Osteen, we're going to be on, on John McCarthy, we're going to be on everywhere. 
Oh my gosh. We are going to be YouTube big time. Big time. We're going to have so many hits. Hey, we got 114 subscribers now. Yes. One at a time. One at a time, you know. I think I saw something about Donald Trump. Joining our subscription, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, done everything, so we can as long as we don't get a Joel's team. About what? Well, well, I think I think what I think what what he may be alluding to is the fact that um, if you look at how New York is multiplying on a daily basis, and you look at the population of New York as opposed to us, hey, look at us, we're careless. We think yeah, we're invincible. We don't. Yeah. So you multiply the ratio that they're getting it as opposed to what, what we are, and hey, what, what makes California any different? Nothing. Nothing. As a matter of fact, I think we're more careless, if you ask me. You know? Crunched in. I'm just saying, from my perspective, from my perspective, I don't know what the ratio is, but if you look what happened in Italy, what's happening in Italy right now? What's happening in Europe? Oh, my, are you kidding? Yeah. I don't, you know what, to be honest with you, I think, I think, I think whatever it is, we need to be aware of it. We just need to be aware of it. It doesn't really matter if, if, if um, we hit those numbers, it's just, we're, we're, we're in charge of what we know. James 4.17. And why would we want to test these things to be, you know, we've already, we're already got that in our old sin nature. We're pushing the envelope. It could be a scare tactic. So it's not a bad scare time. It's not. It's really not. Yeah. I just wanted to have I didn't get to hear the other part. I thought he had some basis for that. You guys stopped it, so I didn't know. No, actually, we didn't stop it. Um, that was a clip. Oh. Yeah, I didn't get the I didn't get the original because that was done last night. It was done last. It was it was aired last night. I guess on TV, and I don't have TV. Since I don't have TV, I didn't get to see it. And what I got was that clip. And I sent that clip out because um, we don't have TV here. So um, the reality is, as a, as a program, all I can do is govern as a program. As a program, I got to tell you, you know, we got to be tight. Yeah. Mr. Kim closed the store. Oh, yeah? Hey, let me tell you. Let me tell you. It's you're never gonna see Oriental people do that. Oh wow, that's a gold mine. Hey, hey, that's their pantry. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm just saying. When you see that happen, that's serious. That's serious. Oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm just you know, thinking about the prayer stuff because if this stuff is really serious like it was, I mean, we've had the swine food and we had the swine flu and the bird flu where people didn't take it serious because it was just like a small episode, you know, just happened and stopped. And so people think that history repeats itself, but this is not just history. This is, this is a way. You know, this is different. This is not just history. I think I think it's real interesting as to how they say it started. Um, 
And here's, here's the idea that I heard last night. I, I did some research and what they're saying is, um, obviously we have worldwide travel. Mm -hmm. We can go from China to America in a matter of hours. And that contributed in the spreading and transferring. But more than anything, there's, there's places out there that, that um, don't respect nature. And you have, you have exotic animals next to other exotic animals, and these animals are being uh, humanized almost. In other words, they're being uh, taught to live in cages where animals were not supposed to learn how to do that. So you have these kitty cats right next to these birds, right next to these monkeys, and they're coexisting in their, this environment, but one came from an Amazon jungle here, the other one came from a jungle there, the other one came from a jungle there, and they're integrating, and they're, they're, they're integrating with humans, and they were never meant to do that. They're sharing diseases, and they're interacting with humans, and they were never meant to do that, and because this interaction happens, and then people are, have the ability to be omnipresent almost with, with the lack of, you know, I'm, spur, I'm morphing that word, I'm etymologically changing that word, okay? So they can be in, in they can eat in one of these wet houses that provide monkey meat that have already been affected or, or, or possum meat or, or rabbit meat or, or this insects that are exotic and meat and, and, and they, they go to the bathroom and they, the bathroom airplane goes in the air and they spread this crap around. And you know, who knows? We just don't know, but God knows. And this isn't the only time it's gonna happen unless you stop worldwide travel and you stop, and if you're not gonna stop it, why? Because it's about money. It's about money. They do it for money. They do it for money. And, and the reality is it's just the way life is. And if we don't discipline ourselves and be subject to the reality of the situation, then, then we're just gonna, we're gonna be our worst own enemy. What's God really doing? He's, he's allowing us to live through a season and we can either be part of the solution or part of the problem. At the end of the day, you thought you came in here because of drugs? <laughs> you know? <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah. All the verses in it are really good. Yeah. I'm reading a book by John McCarthy about anxiety last night I was narr I was reading it aloud to John MacArthur yeah yeah anxiety and I was reading reading it aloud to somebody uh, as a as a class um, and um, uh, I was just I was just I was in in shock as it as he, he takes me to the book of Job and 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 God is telling Job who are you you know, to sit there and question me. Are you the one that does this and this and that and this and names the stars and the planets and just this, this, all this stuff? And, you know, I'm sitting there in awe of God's grandeur and glory. And I'm thinking, ah, this is a walk in the park, man. <laughs> He's never going to give you more than you can handle. When you're in his presence, you're going to say, oh, man, this was a potato chip on the way to the good stuff in the refrigerator, you know? We're tripping. When all he wants us to do is think about his character. Amen. That's our hope right there, man. When we start looking at your character oh, and the character of others, that's when we fall apart. Exactly. Yeah. It says humble yourself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, because when we really are in God's presence, yeah. as he really is, uh -huh. we're humble. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Sobering. Very sobering. Yeah, extremely sobering. Yeah, then and then it, it like changes everything. That's what you know? <laughs> yeah, it's just like wow. You know, you're right. You know, it's not about me. 
It's not about me. But the, but the enemy distracted us. The enemy, we got caught up in our emotions. The reality of that moment, but God is a timeless God. He's an eternal God. And, and when he promises you something, he's going to come through. That's the amazing love of God. Yeah. You forget, hey, you're not a Sanchez, you're not a Mendoza, you're not a, a Rudabaugh, you're not a whatever. You're not that. You're a Christian. You're not a Christian. Oh, you can do it. Yeah, no. <laughs> you like that, huh? Oh, you like that? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and really, it's the love of God which we have to shadow. And if you're not in his presence, you, whatever you're in presence, you're going to shadow that. If you're in the presence of a human being, you're going to shadow um, finiteism. And that's, that's, that's faking it to make it. You know, Joyce Meyer has gone wild. You know, um, that's, that's, that's Jehovah Witnesses. You know, a false ideology. How about this one? That's unbelief. It's not that you don't believe. It's just that you have a lot of misunderstandings about God's character. And it's in your face. It's in your face. That's why I think you guys can handle it today, tomorrow, and forever. Because he never changes. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Amen? Hebrews 13, verse 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you ever hear anybody say anything like, like a Jehovah Witness says, hey, where in the Bible does it say Jesus is God? I would refer him to many of them. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and 6. Uh, Hebrews 13, 8 is another one. Why? Because you cannot prescribe those titles to anybody but God himself. When you call himself, I am Jehovah of the Sabbath. I'm, I am the Lord of the Sabbath. Are you kidding? <laughs> you know? I know I'm not. Someone's got to be. All right. Hey, can you give me um, the screen, please, mijo? Hey, hey, Pastor, I was wondering how many views did I get for my thing? Uh, uh, Let's see. Three hundred and seventy. Views? I mean, the last time I checked, it was 17. I don't know. It's like 17,300. I, I don't know. I think you broke the, the internet broke. The internet broke. Okay, guess what? There's only one true God. Your mama's not God. Your daddy's not God. The subscribers are not God. Nobody should have God over you except for one God. Amen? All right. Um, it's very important that you guys understand that we're going to use this model here. There's three principles that we're going to see in the, within the one being that is God. There exists eternally three co-equal and co-eternal persons. First of all, classic monotheism. There is only one God. That's why I say your mom's not God, your dad's not God, your girlfriend's not God. Nobody is God over you. Only one God. That's why you have to understand that all the pain and suffering that you have, animosity, all your distrust issues, all your codependency issues, all that is temporary. Temporary. It's meant for you to experience. It's meant for you to acknowledge. Homo legale. It's meant for you to recognize, confess your, that to God. That's got to be part of your Detox. You got to tell them somehow or another, I put this person over you and you're going to realize that you think about people you hate more than the ones you love. They got more control over you than the people you're supposed to love. <clears throat> and that's a fact. Because you hate more than you love. Amen? And you got to turn that around. It doesn't mean that you got to let people walk all over you. No, you have to be a man of, of character, a man of boundaries, a man of standards that are godly standards because those never change. 
There's consistency. He's the only one that's consistent. That's why he says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. A timeless God, an infinite God can do that. You know, I know you said, I love you, I'll never leave you. But you lied, flat out. You lied the minute you said, I love. Why? Because you didn't even know how to spell love. By the time the, the word came out of your mouth, you were already thinking of the other girl. At least in my mind. <laughs> if, I, if, if my marriages were out in a baseball game, we'd lost. We'd have lost. I lose all the time. I've been married more times than I don't know. And what does that mean? That means I don't know how to love. I don't know how to evaluate love. I, don't, I see things on a physical level more than I do. <sighs> Worth. In terms of God's economy. Sometimes I'm looking for the perfect person for me more than the perfect person in God's mind for me. God didn't look for me to be tall, dark, and handsome. You know, he looked at the jacked up individual I was, you know, and, and he said, eh, that'll do, you know. There's a reason why we need Jesus. If you were perfect, you, would, you wouldn't need Jesus. That's why God says it's harder for a rich man to come to Christ, the kingdom of God. Because the rich man got his option. He can hide it better. He doesn't feel the pressure. You know? You wonder why you didn't make the million dollars? You wouldn't be here if you had the million dollars. The worst thing in your life became the best thing in your life if you look at it from God's perspective. It's up to you to change, though. Amen? Amen? The second thing is that there's three divine persons. There's three, not four, not five. But if you get to heaven and things change, don't get mad at me because I'm already giving you the, 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 the release. Okay? In heaven, you'll see things, you'll talk differently. There'll be food up there, but not to, to, to live off. You, you won't need it to live. You'll just use it to enjoy. Okay? You're going to see your ex-wife, your, your future wife, your present wife, and, and you're not going to have to be hiding from them anymore because you'll be known as you are. It'll, it, it'll be a done issue by then. Your focus is going to be totally different back then. Okay? Things are going to be totally different. Your mother is not going to be hoarding over you. Your father is not going to be hoarding over you. Your enemy is not going to be your problem. Okay? The economy is different up there. The air is different. Words, you can't even use them. Uh, we use anthropomorphic words to express divinity. Uh, uh, an infinite state. You, that's, do you understand that's always going to fall short? That's why we go into the Greek. <laughs> Sometimes. That's why we go into the Greek. Why? Because English is kind of like analog as opposed to Blu-ray. Yeah. You ever see the new TVs? You go to Best Buy, you go to uh, Fry's TV, and they got this room, and you sit there, and you sit in a chair, like the Jensen commercial, and you turn it on, and all of a sudden, it's thundering, and, you know, you're like watching uh, Star Wars, and zoom, and zoom. And they turn on the fan and yeah, sure. you go to the movies and you pay 17 bucks to sit there and have air blow at you and the seats shake and you know all that. Well, that's what happens when you look at God's word from a different perspective. And, and that's what we need to do. We need to be doers of the word instead of just readers of the word. What's the point of knowing if you're not doing it? You're lacking something. The experience. How about that one? What's the point of saying you're a Christian if you're not actually living it out? I mean, you know, there's a point to it. You're going you're gonna to show that to people one day. You're going to show that to people one day. You know? You will be known as you are. 
But everybody's going through a process. That's the beauty of it all. There's nothing to be shameful in the presence of a holy God. You can't even use that word. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. In other words, it, there's a purpose for conviction. There's a purpose for conviction. Conviction is good to a child of God because it's proof that the Father is loving you. We just don't understand it from a human standpoint because we're not used to that. We run away from that. Why? Because the, the author, the originator of it is human. And that's where the trauma starts. Trauma starts on a human level, not a divine level. God is not punishing you. You're doing it yourself. You don't even need enemies. Some of us blame it on the devil. That's the poor person in this world. The person in this world is the devil that's poorly being blamed for three quarters of evil and he don't even know your name. He don't even know your name. We sit there and blame it on somebody just because we don't want to take accountability for our own decisions. There's three divine persons in the Godhead. There's three divine persons in the Godhead. They're very aware of their existence. That's even in his name. The Ego Ami or Anihu, depending on what your translation you're looking at, either if it's in the Septuagint or in the Greek. Um, God always existed. He's timeless. He's eternal. When Moses said, who, do, who should I say uh, is sending me? He was, he was thinking of a name like Bob, Bill, or some awesome name like, like Kimo Sabi. You know, and then God jacks him up by saying, I am. What, what you talking about, Willis? Yeah, I've, I've always existed. I am whatever you need. What are you lacking? That's who I am. Because he didn't have a clue of anybody like him. God is unique. He's like no other. To prescribe him a name is going to fall short every single time. That's why he's given one name above all names. Because the purpose is salvation. You need to be saved to get the rest. These spiritual things are only spiritually discerned. You cannot try to outthink God. Because that would make you what? God. You can't wrap your mind around God. Don't try to. All of a sudden, it's like the crackhead saying, wait a moment, is this 1999 crack or 2020? Because I'm really looking for that old stuff. That old stuff was much better. I'm looking for that kind of quality. Who read the label on your crack? <laughs> why, are you, why are you trying to question <laughs> things? That you All of a sudden, now you want Grey Poupon? You know? Come on, man. Faith. Faith. How about this? Place your weight and dependency on who he says he is. And let him have already done what he already said he did. And you do the rest. You walk in time. You walk through this. You walk through this. You're the one traversing through time. He's not stuck in time. You are. You don't know what the next hour has. He does. He knows everything. Why are you going to the pastor and getting mad at the pastor? Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. Why are you depending on the pastor when you have a relationship with God? He's telling you, hey, read my word. Read my word. I don't get it. Read it again. I don't get it. You know, if you keep reading his word, Eventually, that stuff's going to sink in. Has anybody ever took the driving test and failed one or two or three times? And paid again? Hey, eventually you got it. Eventually. Aren't we knuckleheads? 
Don't we need to learn the hard way? But eventually we get it. It's already in our DNA. And they're going to be like that in the Word of God. You've been made already like that. And nobody's excluded. Nobody's excluded. Everybody that's here right now has a choice. Hey, as far as we know, we don't have it. And you want to keep that? Then you know the right thing to do. Respect each other's space. Respect each other at the highest level right now. If you cough, cough in your arms. If you sneeze, sneeze on your arms. Hey, you can't say we don't have cl cleaning equipment here. We do. Be very sparing, but be very thoughtful. Okay? Wash, scrub, clean, soap, water. You know? Be very, very careful. Okay? I will not sacrifice the one for the whole. My responsibility is to uphold the standard that God has given us as Christians. I am not a fake Christian program. I will prove it this way. This man and yourselves will not be here if you guys thought I was fake. If you guys really thought I was fake, you guys wouldn't be here. Why? Because you guys are the craftiest, the sharpest, and most methodical people that God thought I should encounter in my life right now. And looks have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I'm just saying, he perfectly knitted us together to experience this together. Amen? Amen. Difference in function does not indicate an inferiority of nature. Just because I'm here and I'm the teacher doesn't mean I'm better than anybody here. We all have to do our part in all this. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to stop here. I've got plenty of things to do. I'm the one that travels. And, and uh, yesterday when I went to go pick up the Chick-fil-A, I'm telling you, they were tripping hard. The owner of Chick-fil-A looked at me and he, he, he looked perplexed. He looked at me and said, why is he wearing a mask and I'm not? He was looking at me like I had something that I knew something that he didn't. I'm just telling you, you know, I'd rather... My kids sent me pictures of ninjas when I showed them that. They all sent me pictures of ninjas, all kinds of video arcade <laughs> men, and they were all making fun of me, and I said, yeah, at least I won't be the one spreading it or getting it, hopefully. Lord, upon us, to be uh, free of this virus and uh, these times, Lord, we pray for protection of our loved ones that are older. Yes, and yes. Lord, that you can watch over them, that we can trust you with them, and that we can uh, focus on the things that we have to do here in our lives. So we just uh, look forward to the rest of this day and the things that you have for us, and we just give you all honor, praise, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.